All right, guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. As you can see beside me, um, our fridge is installed. Uh, today, what we're gonna talk about is our Iceco uh, fridge for the JL. Uh, and kind of go about how we put it in here. Um, it's on the fridge slide, of course, and we're gonna talk about some of the challenges. If this is something you're interested in, uh, please stick around. Uh, we've been doing a series of videos on getting our uh, JL Rubicon ready for some overlanding trips. And uh, this is just the next part in the series. So. Now we decided to go with the ice coat because uh, to be honest with you, pricing. I have a Dometic. Um, I really like the Dometic that was in my truck. It's too big for the uh, Jeep. And so when we started looking at uh, fridges that uh, could fit between the back seat and the tailgate, there were only a couple different models that were available. And while I really wanted to go with the Dometic, um, the Ice Coast price point at about $550 is just really hard to beat. And uh, it's got really good reviews. It's got a good insulation package. It's got a durable uh, case. And, you know, we really thought it was just kind of the best opportunity for us. A couple factors to think about uh, when you're buying a fridge is one, what is the distance between the back of the seat and the tailgate? Um, every you know half inch or so that you increase the height of the platform or uh, in this case with the fridge slide uh, the higher that uh, fridge sits or hits the back of the seat since the back of the seat is at an angle um, the fridge increasingly has less space as you move up so one of the challenges with the fridge slide and the little three quarter inch platform we put in is that we are probably maxed out um, as far as the actual uh, length of the fridge that can fit in there because uh, the door pushes right up against the fridge when you shut it. One of the things that we had to do was we had to bend this tab up because it was hitting uh, the bump out in the door. And you can see we made a little mark, you know, right there. But something else to think about is um, I put this uh, tray up here from Vector Off-Road and uh, obviously you can't open the lid uh, when this is in here and you pull it out and see there's the mid lock and then it locks fully and like I showed earlier the lid just clears that shelf well unfortunately for that to happen, I had to re-drill holes. So we had to move holes. So these are the original holes from the factory. We had to move an inch and a quarter up to slide the tray closer to the back seat so that there was enough clearance for the lid to open up. Just something to think about if you put one of these trays in there uh, because it will impact the system. So. As you saw, we did take it camping um, with us when we went out to James River State Park. Um, it worked flawlessly. It's got AC and DC power. It's got uh, low battery cutoffs. And you can change the speed of the compressor depending on you know, how uh, warm it is outside. So if you need the compressor to work a little bit more, you can turn it on high speed if it's a pretty cool temperature um, outside um, and the compressor doesn't work as hard, it'll reduce the amount of amps that it pulls um, uh, off your battery setup, depending on how you got it wired in. So, like I said, we're really happy with it. It's worked so far. We're going to test it out again soon. Uh, we also have a lithium 12 volt lithium battery and a DC to DC charger uh, that we'll be connecting uh, to make this thing run independently. So, uh, if you like what we're doing, please stick around, like, uh, subscribe, share, and uh, our next uh, video will probably be the setup of the uh, lithium battery and the DC to DC charger and its connection uh, to the fridge itself. So. Thanks for watching.